Okay, hello and welcome. My name is Cara Snyder. I'm an Associate Director of Alumni Engagement at UC Santa Cruz, and I'm also an alumnus, Crown College, American Studies Class of 2006. Today's webinar will be led by career coaches from Flex Jobs, our partners, in collaboration with our office, Alumni Engagement at UC Santa Cruz. We aim to equip you with some tools and support if you have experienced a layoff or a temporary furlough during the pandemic. After the presentation by our Flex Jobs career coaches, we hope you join us in breakout rooms to continue the conversation and build on ideas shared. We have several alumni volunteers leading the breakout rooms today, including a couple of our career coach directory folks. Before we get into the program, we'd like to take a poll of our audience today. We'll launch that now. And if you could please take a few moments to answer the questions on your screen and we will share the results out when we're done. So you get to know a little bit more about who's here with you in the event today. While you fill out that poll. Just wanna let you know that today's event is being recorded and it will be made available on our website in the next few days. And at any time, if you have questions, you can enter them in the Q&A box. And we've allowed you to upvote any questions that you'd really like us to ask our presenters. You may also turn on the closed captioning on your Zoom toolbar if you'd like. And after today's event, we hope that you fill out the survey so we can learn more about what types of career programming you'd like to see from UC Santa Cruz in the future. I'll just give that poll another minute or two. Thanks for joining us today. We look forward to the conversations we're going to have in our breakout rooms. I'm excited to introduce you to our dedicated alumni volunteers who will be leading those. Some of them are coaches, some of them are council members. Okay, I think we can wrap that poll up and share those results out so you can see who's here with you today. Majority of you having experienced at least one layoff. A lot of you in the pandemic. Great. All right, so just keep those in mind as we move forward. All right, so now I'd like to introduce our presenters. If we can go to the next slide, please. Tracy Capozzoli has an education specialist degree in career and mental health counseling and a master of science in counseling and human systems. She's an experienced remote career coach with expertise in career pivots and job seeking. With professional experience in higher education, nonprofits, government and independent contracting and private sector agencies. She also is a military spouse. Sydney Work has a master's of education specializing in college student personnel and a bachelor of science in journalism focused on strategic communications and public relations and is also a military spouse. She is a skilled career coach with professional experience in higher education, meeting and event management and public relations and advertising. Please note that as a result of our partnership with Flex Jobs, um, they offer a 30% discount for all their services. You'll see that code on the next slide and we'll chat that out to you as well. So 30% off for all UC Santa Cruz alumni and with that, I'd like to turn things over. We'll chat that out before we turn things over for slides, but I'd like to turn things over to our presenters, Sydney and Tracy. Great, thank you. Okay, so let's, okay, great. There goes that, now it's our turn. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Cara and team, and for having us back. Uh, this is our second webinar that we have done in conjunction with uh, UC Santa Cruz, and we're very excited to be back. So thank you. This is obviously a very timely topic. Um, I was really excited to see the results of the poll. And it's, um, 
something I see that a lot of people are re really interested in. So Sydney and I are thrilled to be here. Uh, so let's go ahead and move forward and just talk a little bit about, oops, I kind of wondered how that would go. <laughs> Always has to be a moment. We just went through this. Oh, there we go. Okay, we are working now. So just a little bit of housekeeping things. Um, we do have the chat section open and the chat section within Zoom is really more of a participant section for you guys. So if whatever we're talking about on that slide, um, you feel you have some professional information that would be great to share with the uh, other participants, we encourage you to use that part of the uh, Zoom toolbar for your guys' engagement. The Q&A section, um, that is for you to record questions that you would, you would like Sydney and I to address, uh, which we will be doing at the end of the presentation. Um, our presentation will last probably about 40 minutes and then we'll move into the uh, live Q&A. And then from there, I know you guys are gonna break out into your breakout rooms. So I uh, just kind of wanted to cover that as a little bit of uh, housekeeping. So here are the topics that we're going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to talk about how to create a structured recovery plan, really a lot about how to talk about closing that gap um, and filling that gap. That's a very important piece um, when dealing with a, with a layoff, whether that be from um, a furloughed or a layoff um, or both as they merge into one another, and then um, how to uh, prepare your job application materials. So let's go ahead and move forward. Okay, so uh, for some of you that had been with us in our previous uh, webinar, you might already know a little bit about Flex Jobs, but for those that are new, I just wanted to briefly talk a little bit about ourselves. Um, we have been around since 2007, um, and we are a job search website that is focused on helping and providing um, remote and flexible work options. So we are a membership-based website. That is the one difference between us and other job search websites. Um, with that, we really try to focus on removing that key pain point in searching and finding um, flexible and remote work options. Uh, we strive really hard to um, vet our jobs. All of our jobs are vetted so that they are uh, scam free. Um, they are also uh, ad free. We do not have ads on our site. Um, and we try to uh, avoid having commission only opportunities and then low quality jobs on our site. So that is part of the reason why we are a membership paid website. Uh, we do have job opportunities that are within the remote and flexible work sphere that is within 50 job categories or career field categories and our jobs span entry level all the way to the executive level. Um, many of our resources are open to the public, so please know that you do not need to have a Flex Jobs membership to access um, our articles, our blogs, our webinars. Um, but if you did want a full review of the jobs, then that is open to our members. Uh, we do have a Flex Jobs tour that I believe Sydney might be able to put into the chat. Oh, and I did want to mention that we will also be using the chat to share our resources um, so that you can download them and save them for future use. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how um, COVID has really impacted the remote workspace. So the next few slides are going to really talk about um, some stats and some data that we have been gathering since the beginning of the pandemic. So we're going on close to a year of having to gather this data, um, but we felt this was very important to kind of give you guys a foundation of, of how the remote and flexible work market is changing, um, just so that you're aware. So let me make my own slides a little bit bigger. All right, so um, since 2019 to 2020, we have seen quite an increase in um, jobs that are being listed on FlexJobs. So it has been a 19% increase. Um, and then within the past six years, five, six years, we've seen a 140% increase. So uh, a lot of that we're finding um, remote employment is growing. Uh, a lot of people are wanting to work remotely and a lot of people are wanting to stay in remote work. Um, 
in the past decade, you're looking at a 2200 percent increase in um, jobs that have been posted onto um, our site. So remote seekers, that is also uh, increased by 50% just within the last year. So that's something for you guys to be aware of. Um, this slide speaks mainly to um, data and statistics that we've been gathering since um, March of last year into December of 2020. So these are the fastest growing career fields that have come about since the pandemic really took over. Um, these career fields historically have been within our top career fields, but some of them may not have necessarily um, numbered out in this category. So marketing has never always been at the top. It's been within the top 10, but now, as you can see, it is uh, one of the fastest growing career fields, um, as is administrative, HR, and recruiting. So um, we're noticing that as the pandemic continues on, it does impact the different career fields um, and how quickly they grow. So this is something else for you guys to figure out. Um, and I do believe that uh, we also have an article referring to the 10 fastest growing career fields that we can share with you guys as well. And so now um, just a little bit about before and after the pandemic, some statistics. Please know that these statistics um, mainly refer to uh, workers that are classified as employee. So this does not cover workers that are independent contractors or freelancers. Um, but this is from a survey of the US Census American Community Survey. And before the pandemic, um, the remote and flexible workforce was only 4.9%. Uh, as of November, 2020, it had bounced all the way up to 37%. Um, and future predictions expect probably around 2025 that it will be around 25% um, of the US employee workforce. So that's roughly 36.2 million. So we are finding um, from some studies and articles that 61% of workers really view, view remote work for, workforce as positive um, and 50% of employers feel the same way. 65% uh, of remote workers really kind of want to remain in a remote work capacity and 31% are interested in more of a hybrid um, component. So just a little bit of how the pandemic is impacting the workforce. So now we're going to talk about moving into um, preparing and recovery from a layoff. So let's get started. Okay, so the next few slides they're gonna be a little bit more chatty, um, not necessarily real deep into specifics because you do have to actually be aware that parts of this are touchy-feely. Um, when moving into uh, a recovery and thinking about why you are experiences, experiencing this, you are gonna to have to address your feelings. Um, anytime you go through uh, a furloughed or, or layoff, um, it's a grief period. It is a loss. You have to address that. Um, and if you don't address those feelings, we often find career coaches um, and career counselors find that those feelings have a way of coming back out as you get further down into your job search. Um, so some typical feelings that might be coming up as you move through this, and, I, and I've noticed when looking at your poll, uh, a lot of you are going into um, extended months, six to 12 months of, of being in a layoff. So these feelings may uh, be changing and maybe becoming a bit more intensified as you move, move throughout it. So anger, sadness, um, being anxious, and some uncertainty. Uh, it's very common to feel that having a gap on your resume, you worry about the length of that gap. And if you're in it longer, will it take longer to get out of it? And that's a very common thing. Um, to be worrying about as you move forward in this process. So um, don't discount the validity and the importance of addressing those feelings so that you can move forward with um, creating your action plan. Okay, so now we're gonna actually talk about structuring your recovery plan um, and dealing with those feelings is a part of that. Okay, so these, these these top five slide or five points here are really what we're going to talk about um, in terms of how you bounce back. 
So you're going to want to start with self-reflection and evaluation, um, and you need to be honest when going through those pieces. Um, it may not be fun. Uh, it may actually uh, bring out feelings and emotions that you did not want to address. Um, and you may have to ask yourself, what was it? Um, if it was something that was within your control, what were those things that you could have addressed? If it was with out of, outside of your control, what can you do better next time? Um, and hopefully there won't be a next time. Then once you move through that uh, a period of self-evaluation, then you can move into broadening your path and seeing what options are actually out there for you and how do you uh, move forward in, in finding those opportunities. And you might find that you have several different paths um, and ways to, to find new opportunities. It might be clear for others that they have just one targeted path to search when looking for a new job. Um, so really that comes down to what's best for you and how yourself is going to fit into those opportunities. Um, be very clear about upskilling. What skills do you need uh, to move forward in finding new jobs, particularly if you're choosing to stay in the remote workforce? Uh, we're finding that some of the most common remote collaboration tools out there are Zoom, Skype, um, Google Suite or G Suite. Uh, within that drive, doc, slides, um, sheets, Slack, and different instant messaging systems, um, Microsoft OneDrive is one, uh, GoToMeeting, and then um, BlueJeans as well. So those are some very common remote collaboration tools. And what you might want to be aware of is uh, what areas are you lacking in that you could develop those skills so that you can then enhance that, put that on your resume, Find a way to uh, own that gap, describe that gap, um, and really get comfortable talking about that gap. Um, so practice talking about your situation um, and how you're overcoming that. And then be very clear about setting your weekly goals. Um, when you're creating your action plan and you're moving forward, you want to have set goals and you want these goals to be realistic to where you are and who you are. So that might mean for you, you're really great at um, networking and developing networks and having communications uh, and conversations with others. And, and maybe um, you want to focus on that aspect of job searching and then getting out one to two um, job applications a week, whereas someone else, they may feel that they're really great at spending their time at developing um, very tailored job applications, and maybe they aim for more three to four job applications and just one to two new connections a week. So think about who you are and where your strengths lie in terms of um, moving forward with your tasks and being realistic about what you can actually accomplish so that you're not adding to your own stress um, and anxiety of, am I doing enough to get back out there? Okay, so let's first start with, and, uh, with the first two pieces of that previous slide, evaluation and reflection. So the beginning pieces of, of um, moving into an action plan are gonna have to start with you. You've gotta create a strong foundation and you've gotta become comfortable with that foundation, that foundation being yourself. So start asking yourself, what motivates you to wanna work? You've gotta think about what your work values are. Um, and this would be a work value besides pay. So if salary were removed and you could focus on any other things, what's gonna make you wanna go back to work? Um, for some, it might be an example of like having a direct contribution to someone's life, partnering with someone and helping them make a decision or a change. For others, it might be that you really have a strong number sense. Um, you enjoy finding structure and order in, um, in reconciling financial documents and the fact that you've been able to um, reach conclusion um, and 100% accuracy on certain financial documents, that's a great motivator for you. So keying in and asking yourself, what's going to motivate me to want to go back to work, to find the job, to find success? And you might want to think about it as like um, that burning belly sensation that you have um, that's just 
going to propel you to keep moving forward. So start thinking about that. The next step is that you're going to want to think about what experiences you might have already completed. So when you think about your work experiences. Um, you can go all the way back, maybe it's 10 to 15 years beyond um, something that you did in your previous life. So it may not necessarily be work employment experiences that are on your current resume, but maybe further back. Uh, and these experiences do not have to necessarily be paid work. Maybe you had a great experience when you were in college, you worked at a certain um, office within the college and you really enjoyed that aspect and you'd like to bring that more into the forefront. Um, just recently, I was working with a client that had been a nonprofit for quite some time and she realized that she wanted to make a career change and a career, piv a career pivot. And she wanted to go back towards stuff she had been doing about a decade ago. Um, she enjoyed the nonprofit piece, but the political aspects of it uh, were starting to become too much. And so now she was pivoting back to where she first started. So think about that. Um, what was it that, really enjoy that you really enjoyed and how could you bring that back into where you are now? Um, knowledge and skills, that's another piece. You need to start thinking about and identifying your transferable skills. Uh, not only your transferable skills, but also your soft, um, your soft skills, your industry hard specific skills, and then those flexible, remote friendly skills. Um, these are really important to, to have onto your resume, to incorporate into your um, story, so that when you get to that piece about having to talk about your gap, um, you feel real confident in what you've been doing so that you can move forward. So some, some sample questions you might want to ask yourself is, you know, what do other people say you're good at versus what do you think you're, you are good at? Um, also, what are you most confident in? Um, and then what do people, what did people come and ask you to do um, on a regular basis? So when you were considered an expert, what did you find people coming to you and asking for help on? Um, so getting in touch with those skills. Here, it's important to be really honest with yourself that just because you like the skill, um, or I'm sorry, just because you're good at the skill doesn't mean that you like the skill. So when you're choosing these uh, next paths and these next avenues of which way you're going to go, you want to pick the ones that you feel most confident in because these are going to be the skills that you rely on very heavily as you transition into um, getting your action plan together and getting your deliverables together so that you can conduct that job search. So being aware of that. And then including yourself, um, your personality, knowing who you are and what do you want out of work. So uh, when you think about yourself, what you're going to want to think about is um, who are you as a worker? What do you need to be successful as a worker? So in a management situation, um, what do you want from your, from your uh, supervisor? Do you want to have an open door conversation where they come and it's more of a mentor mentee relationship? Or do you want to have a situation with your supervisor where they're more hands off? Um, they give you your tasks. And then from there, they feel confident and comfortable that you can go and get that work done. So you have to think about what do you need as a worker so that you can flourish. Um, maybe you find that you really enjoy collaborative environments in big picture ideas, but then you get to separate and get into the nitty gritty and do that task work individually and then come back. Um, or maybe you find that you really enjoy independent one-on-one -on -one work and you only reach out um, to get specific questions from experts if needed. So knowing which environments you flourish in and what you need as a worker is very important as well. So what we find is that a lot of people, when they spend the time thinking about themselves and looking at these things, um, they don't really have as much of a hard time thinking about the first three bullets, but it's rather when they start asking themselves, what makes me different from somebody else? So if you're going to be competing for an opportunity against say, Sally, what makes you different from Sally? So stepping outside of yourself and bringing in others to give you a well-rounded view of yourself is very important. Um, and this is a part that may be 
uh, hard for some of us is reaching out and saying, hey, can you give me a little bit of perspective of how you see me? So um, think about who you feel comfortable and confident with and someone that you trust, and you can reach out to them and ask them to just uh, send you an email or um, give them a phone call and just have a quick conversation about um, how they see you. So some questions you might ask them would be, you know, what makes me a strong professional? Or um, when you think of me, what are two to three unique things that you think of that made me a strong coworker, um, that makes me a really great volunteer, um, or that made me a great uh, supervisor? And then from there, you get to see other people's perspectives. And then you can also identify new strengths or skills that you may not have always uh, relied on that they rely on. And then from there, you can start crafting that into um, your story and also into your gap so that you can um, kind of create a new fresh look about yourself. So from here, really what this gets into is we have what we call our four-step process. And really it's the basics of um, going back to uh, finding a new career, but really putting yourself at that at that pinpoint, the middle point of how you can move forward. So we have um, the four step, which I believe Sydney can pop into the chat. Um, and then I also wanted to point out uh, the career one stop. I don't know how many of you are familiar with careeronestop.org, um, but it is a Department of Labor website that is, um, it's, a career, it's a career and occupational um, exploration website that covers a lot of great resources um, for job seekers, career changers, any kind of occupational information um, that you might need from salary explorations to um, projected career growth that's out there. And what they've done is they have really responded um, to the pandemic and they have created a portal that's specifically for the employment recovery piece. So um, we've gone and taken a look at that. That's an excellent resource. Uh, and that's also out there that Sydney will pop into the chat for you guys to explore as well. Okay, so since you've already kind of begun that piece of the um, four step process, maybe you looked at the career one stop. The next step is you've got to get into training and goal setting. Um, so as part of this, maybe you've realized that in returning back to a, a previous work experience that you had, you might need to um, refresh or um, upskill on some of your skills. So with that, start thinking of ways that you can enhance these skills um, and return to some form of training. That doesn't necessarily have to mean it has to be formalized where you actually pay for a certificate program, um, but maybe you do some more informal training. So you can check out skillshare.com or you could do a LinkedIn learning course. Um, Udemy also has some great courses as well as um, Coursera. We're finding that, uh, and as that showed previously on one of the earlier sites, marketing is becoming um, very popular. A lot of um, training is out there now on Google Analytics and different types of um, data training out there, particularly when it comes to marketing. And so those are very popular um, resources that we're giving out. So that would be another great thing for you guys to um, really get honest about and looking at other ways that you can upskill your training. Uh, another great way that you could kind of really decide whether or not this is an avenue for you is to consider um, getting some real work experience. And that I know that's kind of hard of how am I going to move out and do that in a, an environment where everything is remote. Um, but there is virtual volunteering that you could still get involved in. So um, I believe it's volunteermatch.org actually has a virtual volunteer aspect to it, where when you go on, you can click that opportunity and then they can match you up so that you could get some real world um, experience that you could put on your resume. It could be used as a confirming piece that, yeah, I really do want to return to this former life that I had, um, or it could be a way for you to um, move into a new opportunity and develop new skills um, and have new experiences. 
So consider that as well. Um, when it comes to setting weekly goals, again, here you need to really think about what are these tasks. Uh, when you're setting these tasks, these tasks do not have to be um, concrete in the sense that you only create job search activities if you're applying for a job. Now, a lot of job search activities um, might be reading and learning about job descriptions, maybe taking some skills assessments and figuring out what your transferable skills are and how to apply that to job searching. That's a very strong task and a very strong accomplishment if you can get through that um, and figure out where you really wanna go. So that's a great um, milestone or weekly achievement um, to complete. Next, you could meet with a career coach or you could attend these webinars um, so that you can learn that information as well. Uh, some other things you might want to do is maybe you set a, a, a weekly uh, achievement that you're going to reach out and make a connection with two different connections. And then from there, you're going to try to schedule and, and, and complete one um, phone call to learn some more information. That's another great um, activity to complete weekly. Or, or you sign up for uh, uh, different networking events through LinkedIn. Um, maybe you research and read articles, but whatever you decide is going to be your weekly task list. Make sure that it fits with what you're comfortable doing with who you are. Um, you don't want to overwhelm yourself by having too many tasks out there and then you don't achieve any. And at the same time, you don't want to underwhelm yourself so that you're not doing enough. Um, and when you're doing these and identifying these, realize that it's, it's going to take some fluidity and it will change. And it's okay if you realize you didn't do enough this week and you could do more next week. Um, so have it be a variety of activities that you do that keep moving you forward so that you figure out where you wanna go to recover. Okay. All right, now we're gonna turn it over to Sydney and she's gonna talk about addressing uh, the gap on your resume. Awesome, thank you, Tracy. So yes, Tracy outlined all of the kind of necessary initial steps of that reflection, the you know sitting with your feelings, the evaluation piece, and then determining what it is that you actually might wanna start applying for and doing. So we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about how to take ownership of that story and how to put your best foot forward as you are applying. So Tracy, next slide. On your resume, um, our suggestion is to go ahead and add a professional career break section to highlight what it is that you've been doing dur during this time and to address your gap right away. Um, so a recent study that we've seen actually showed that those who addressed the career break or the career gap on their resume and cover letter and application materials had almost a 60% um, chance of getting an interview over those who did not disclose it. The biggest thing here is that you don't want those hiring managers managers and recruiters to, you know, make assumptions or wonder what you've been doing during this time off. Maybe you got laid off in July or August. It's been several months and they're curious about what it is that you've been doing during that time. So going ahead right away, and this is a sample that will be going into the chat as well, so you can have it to reference later, and addressing your career break, adding the dates from when you got laid off to now, um, if you're still on that break, and just highlighting one or two bullets about what you've been doing during this time. So you can see a few examples here. Um, the third example that talks about being laid off due to a change in company strategy. Um, those of you who might be at home doing remote learning with your kids, um, you can say that you've been focusing on full-time caregiving, maybe you have decided to go back to school and do some additional education yourself, you can mention any coursework that you've been completing. It doesn't need to be super in-depth. You don't have to be specific, you know, saying what type of caregiving you were doing, or if you moved, you know, from what state to what state. You just want to give one or two bullets that explains what you've been doing during this time and makes the recruiter and hiring manager go, oh, okay, that makes sense, as opposed to, like I said, making those assumptions or questioning what you've been doing during this time. 
Um, so think about what you've been doing. And then this is a great place to highlight if you are doing anything, any software tools or systems, any Coursera courses, any of those things that Tracy talked about earlier. Um, most of the articles that we've been reading and seeing are highlighting that one of the top questions you can be expected to ask in 2021, if you haven't already, is what have you been doing during the pandemic? How have you been using this time off if you have been laid off? So you want to have those stories prepared and ready to go that highlight, you know, I have been laid off since July, but here's all the things I've been doing during this time, other than, you know, of course, just trying to cope with losing a job that I've had, but I've also been at home doing remote learning with my kids. I, you know, relocated to a different state or I've, you know, been taking online courses. So just be prepared to address those right away in your resume and on your cover letter and have those stories ready to go for your interviews so that you can address it head on and you're not letting them, you know, create that story for you. So if you go to the next slide, I have a couple of other examples here um, to show you. Give me one moment here. Um, so a couple other examples, intentional pause to coordinate and manage a cross-country relocation. Maybe you lost your job and decided to relocate. Um, maybe you've taken this time off just to travel and you are doing that. Maybe you're doing freelance work. This is another great way to fill those gaps is consider any freelance or contract or volunteer opportunities that you can do during this time just to continue to show that you're staying professionally active and engaged. You know, you're, you're taking time time to really utilize your skills and your experiences to contribute in other ways. I know that many of you maybe have had to take on a part-time job or something maybe, you know, in retail or in the food and beverage industry or something as you're just continuing to job search for another role. This is a great way to highlight those experiences as well. If you don't want to dedicate, you know, a full section to, you know, being a barista or being a retail worker or, or whatever it might be, you can just add one bullet in this career break that says that you've also you know, taking some time to work part-time in retail, food and beverage, et cetera, whatever it might be. Um, so you can include that there instead of giving it a full section itself. If you're pursuing a certification, maybe you've decided to get, you know, your project management certification or something like that. This is a great place to put that as well, saying that you're, you know, you've actively are pursuing your project management certification and taking advantage of time that way. So really just going ahead and thinking about what you've been doing during this time and addressing it head on so that you're controlling and taking ownership of that story. Tracy, next slide. So once it's on your resume, then you're obviously going to need to include it in your cover letter and interviews as well. And here you might have to elaborate a little bit further or be prepared to answer some of those additional questions. So we're going to give you a few actionable steps on how to talk about this that doesn't feel scary and intimidating and also makes yourself, you know, sound in the best positive light and manner that is possible. So Tracy, next slide. So the biggest thing is to keep it short and sweet. You don't want to spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes elaborating on what happened. You know, well, here's this, here's that. You want to keep it short and simple and maybe keep it at the basics and then just be positive about why you're proactively seeking work, why you're excited about this role in organization and practicing ahead of time. That's going to be the key thing is actually writing it out you know, figuring out what your story is, what your quick 30 second to one minute story will be, and then practicing it so that you feel confident saying it. Three to four sentences explaining how you've made the most of your time, which I just referenced a little bit ago, what you've been doing to fill this time, why you're interested in a new field. So for example, maybe you've been in the hospitality industry or the live events industry, which has been really impacted and really affected during the pandemic. You can say something along the lines of, you know, as you may know, because of COVID-19 and the pandemic, my industry has been hit really hard. So I've taken this time to really reevaluate and re-examine and what my career goals and priorities are and see if I can find something that might be a better fit or an equal fit to what my interests are. And that's what led me to your role in your organization. Most employers and hiring managers are very aware of those industries that have been impacted. They know that everyone's struggling right now and hurting right now. And so they will truthfully respect and appreciate that honesty and that you've also been um, kind of approaching this job search with a growth mindset that, you know, maybe you've been in one industry for 15, 20 years and this layoff, you're kind of like, what can I even do? I've done this one thing for so long, but the fact that you're willing to be flexible and adaptable and see what kind of 
transferable skills you have to maybe try something new and really highlighting all the research and planning that you've done that has led you to that specific role at that specific organization. Um, maybe, you know, because of this time off, you've really had an opportunity to think more about something that was a volunteer project or a passion project or a side project. And now that you've had this unique opportunity to re-examine your career goals, you've realized maybe you want that to be a full-time career. Other things to consider here are the fact that, you know, maybe you have been a high, high level executive, you've been a manager of larger teams, and you've realized during this time off that you're excited to get back to an independent contributor role. You liked managing teams and you liked being a part of that, but you actually miss getting to do the work, you know, yourself in an independent contributor level. So thinking of those antidotes and those stories, maybe you are going into a different um, industry or a different career field. And so you are applying for a lower level position. And so having that messaging ready as well, that, you know, you've been a manager and you've, you've led teams, but you're excited to be a part of a team and not be in a management type of position. So that also maybe when you're applying, you know, people aren't worried that you're going to be overqualified for a position as well. Anything that you can do to really help eliminate any worries or fears that a hiring manager or recruiter might have about you trying something new or doing something different, or, you know, starting this job after you've been laid off is going to be what's helpful helpful for you and focusing on the positive. So again, like instead of spending 15 minutes explaining what happened in your layoff and what you did there, instead, you know, I had these great accomplishments in this role and here's how I'm excited to use my skills and abilities to contribute to your organization. Here's how I'm excited about joining your team in this new role, really highlighting what it is about moving forward instead of reflecting on the past. And just like I said, keeping it short, sweet and simple and to the point. Um, if you're not familiar already with LinkedIn's mock interview tool, um, they are a great place to practice these questions and practice video interviewing. It's free. Um, you don't have to have a LinkedIn premium account to use it. And there are about 20 interview questions there. And you can actually record yourself answering those questions, get automatic AI feedback, and then watch yourself on that recording to see how well you did answering that question. So the more you can just reflect, come up with those two to three bullet points four sentences, and then practice, you'll feel more confident owning that conversation instead of feeling, you know, nervous and flustered going into it. And just remember that being honest and transparent and upfront is going to be what's going to help you the most. So here are a few other examples um, that you can use just to kind of get you started. Oh, if you want to, yep, yep, you can go back, Tracy, <laughs> to the next slide. Uh, yep, there you go. Um, so my most recent employer implemented layoffs as a result of the global pandemic, including my position, and then highlight the positive. I was consistently recognized for outstanding performance and teamwork, and I plan on delivering that same quality of work and collaboration in my next position. So yes, I got laid off, but here are the great things about me as a worker. Here's how I'm going to contribute to your organization in a positive way as well. Um, my position was eliminated due to a corporate restructuring. The company was acquired and duplicate positions like mine were eliminated. The economic downturn forced the company to cut costs, which included layoffs. My position was one of several reduced because of a change in strategy. So these are very short, simple um, sentences. You're not going further into elaboration. You're not saying anything negatively about your employer. That's another key piece here, which I'm sure you all know already, but making sure that you're not, you know, talking negatively about your last employer or your situation, because that's never going to reflect favorably upon you in the interview as well. So keeping it positive, keeping it short, sweet, and simple. And something else you can do here is do a little bit of introspection and think about, you know, out of everyone that was, you know, furloughed or laid off and your position was cut, is there anything that your position, you know, could have been more valuable in or that you could continue to grow and improve and reflecting on, you know, my position was eliminated. It was, I was laid off. I was furloughed, but here's what I learned from this. And here's how I'm, you know, going to be dedicated to improving or making sure I'm, you know, a value in future organizations and positions as well. So keeping that growth mindset, doing some introspection and some reflection, keeping it positive and really just leveraging, you know, I'm excited about this new step and moving forward as opposed to just reflecting on the past and the negative situation that I'm facing. I know it can be really difficult and challenging during this time, especially if you've been searching for several months to keep up that positivity, 
but just knowing that the more positive you approach the conversation, the more positive um, that employer and hiring manager and recruiter are going to react to that situation as well. The ultimate goal is to, like I said, eliminate any fears or worries or assumptions they might have about you and helping them see you in the best light for that specific role in that specific organization. Next slide, please, Tracy. So with that said, hopefully you feel like you have some really good action steps here to move forward past your layoff, taking time to first acknowledge your feelings, understanding the situation, understanding that you're not alone. Many people are going through this exact same situation with you right now, as you can see, even from this webinar today, um, doing that internal self-evaluation and reflection. And I, I tend to be a little bit of a, a positive, optimistic person, but I tend to think of these situations as a little bit of a gift, a gift of, of time to really reflect on what you might want to do that you didn't do before, that you didn't have the opportunity to do before. You might have been just on one career trajectory and one career path this entire time and didn't really feel like you could explore other things. So really kind of approaching this with that positive mindset that this is a gift to really reevaluate other new opportunities that are out there. I have so many clients who've done one thing and one industry for 20 plus years. And there's so many new jobs and skills and opportunities and industries today that they had never heard of, had never considered before, or hadn't even thought could be an option for them. So really taking the time to utilize those resources we, we mentioned earlier and that we put in the chat of exploring new industries. What are new career opportunities? What else is out there that could be a really awesome fit for you that you just hadn't, hadn't thought of before? Um, and that will really help you choose your new path and focus moving forward so that you have some direction and you're not just you know, looking all over the place, you're not just applying to anything and everything, but you're really spending that intentional and strategic time moving in a targeted direction. It might be towards, you know, two or three things, but you're still focused and you're not just kind of all over the place. Um, taking time to do upskilling and retraining. There's so many free online opportunities out there. Um, and if there aren't free ones, there are usually a lot of low cost ones with all the ones that Tracy mentioned earlier, taking the time to new, learn new skills, Remote collaboration platforms like Zoom, like Slack, anything like that usually have free um, tutorials that you can download, that you can play around with. And that's something really great to leverage in your interview as well. If there is a tool or a software system or a platform that is going to be expected for you to use in a job that you're applying for that you haven't used before, taking the initiative to download that free tutorial ahead of time and practice with it and get familiar with it so that in your interview, you can say, you know, I haven't used this professionally, but I've taken the time to download it. I'm familiar with it. And I feel really confident that I'll be able to catch on quickly and get up to speed right away in this new position. The ultimate thing that employers want to see is that you're someone who's going to be flexible. You're going to be adaptable. You can quickly and independently learn new things on your own um, where they're not going to have to spend extensive time training you necessarily on all of these things. And so the more you can show that you are independently um, and quickly able to learn these new things, that's gonna help you be very successful as you move forward in your search. Setting those weekly goals so that it feels more manageable and actionable. A lot of times we approach the job search as if it's just one thing, I'm job searching, but really it's a combination of a lot of things. It's, it's the skilling piece, it's the networking piece, it's taking time to work on your resume, taking time to work on your cover letter, practicing interviews. There are a lot of components and unless you break it down into those steps, you're never going to feel like you're accomplishing anything because otherwise you're just waiting for that job offer to feel like you accomplish something. But if you set those weekly goals every week, you can say, I made two new connections. I updated my resume. I'm a big checklist person. So I always appreciate getting to, you know, cross off even those easy things, but that's going to make you feel like you're moving forward, like you're doing something and keeping in mind that the average job search, even before the pandemic did take six to 12 months or three to six months. And so now we're more six to 12 months with the pandemic. And so it does take a long time from start to finish. And so that is normal. It's not, um, it's very rare to get a job offer within one month or, you know, a couple of weeks. That is a very rare thing to happen. And it does take a long time. So keeping that in mind and knowing that it doesn't happen right away. Um, adding the career break section to your resume so that you're addressing it right away. You're tackling that story head on. You're taking ownership of your story, not letting them make assumptions or make up things about what you might have been doing during this time. Writing a short explanation in your cover letters as well, why you're excited to try these new things, why you've realized this might be a good new fit for you. And then practicing your explanations 
practicing with the LinkedIn tool that I mentioned, practicing with friends and family members, and actually having it written down so that you don't have to, you know, think on the spot of what your story is, that you have it, you know, already formulated in, in sentences and thoughts, because sometimes when you're caught off guard on the spot, it's hard to remember what you were going to say. So taking the time to practice as well, and just knowing that ultimately you're not alone and you have a lot of resources between Tracy and I at Flex Jobs and the entire uh, coaching team and, and alumni services that you have here. You have so many people to help you and to help you move forward and feel more confident that you can, you know, prepare yourself for these questions and for these things and that you don't have to do this alone, that you have a support system. So hopefully you feel like you walked away today with some actionable steps and you feel a little bit more confident moving forward. And uh, with that, I think we're happy to answer any questions that y'all have. Great. Thank you so much, Tracy and Sydney. Yes, we're going to do about 10 minutes of Q&A here before we move out to the breakout rooms. Um, so before we transition, um, first, I want to say these rooms are going to be led again by some alumni volunteers. So please do join us. But um, I'd like to highlight several other career resources. So um, if we can get our slides back up um, for UC Santa Cruz. Um, one in particular, oh wait, before we do that, sorry, q and I'm moving too fast. First question um, from Amy. I've been interviewing where they do not ask about my employment gap, even though I have addressed it in my cover letter. Do you suggest I bring it up in a formal interview or not? Oh, that's a good question. So if they're not bringing it up and they're not asking about it, you don't necessarily need to address it unless there's something essential that you've been doing during this time that you want to highlight. So for example, when I mentioned earlier that you've been taking extra courses or you've been upskilling or anything like that, that's going to be relevant to that role. That's where you might want to bring it up yourself. But if they're not questioning it and they're not worried about it, they're not asking you, you definitely don't need to bring it up um, if it's not a concern for them. But that's a great question. Okay, thank you. All right, next question is from Sarah. Do you have any specific advice if you were terminated because of a long-term disability? Anything for that population? Mm -hmm. um, the actually remote work and flexible work is a great option for those that um, are dealing with long-term disabilities or even any sort of disability, whether it be like a chronic illness or something. Uh, so in terms of this, you definitely would still want to use that uh, career gap on your resume uh, as a way to um, fill in what you have been doing during this time. And then as well, you'll want to talk about um, the remote collaboration tools that you've been working on and developing, how you feel comfortable and confident working remotely, so that that is something that um, you can use as a bridge and you don't necessarily have to bring that up and talk about that um, the long-term disability or the chronic illness that you might be dealing with. Um, remote and flexible work really is a great opportunity for those um, because it allows you, particularly if you're looking for alternative and flexible schedules, it allows you to work at a time at your best peak. Um, and that's what you're going to want to look at is look for jobs that best work when you're most productive. So um, if you've kept track of um, aspects of your disability or chronic illness that you might have and you realize that you're more productive at certain parts of the day um, or you know when you might um, have to address, be more aware of your um, physical needs, then try to be a bit of a detective when reading those job descriptions and actually see how that work is conducted to see whether or not it's gonna be a fit with the lifestyle um, and the medical care that you need. Um, so be sure to do your research on that company. Um, spend a lot of time looking at their glass door if you can. Uh, and then also any of their brand pages to see how they um, take a look at and um, put it out there in terms of their work-life balance. They may not come straight out and be real clear about this, but you can be a bit of a, of a detective to get some information to know whether or not that's a good fit for you. Thank you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. All right, our next question is from Sally. Um, Sally's noticed that their position is gonna be cut due to COVID and still has a month on the job before um, their, their employment is terminated. Should they prepare a story now regarding the layoff in an interview, even though they're not actually out of work yet? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And actually we deal with many clients who are in a similar situation where they are furloughed. So technically they're still employed, but they're not actively working. What you'll do is you'll still keep that it's to present because you're technically still employed there. So on your resume, you'll still list it as working now until present. And then yes, exactly. You want to have that story. So if anyone does ask you that, you know, why are you job searching or why are you leaving your current job? If that does come up, then you can prepare that story as well. Well, due to COVID and and, you know, what's going on in my industry or my organization, we are having to do some restructuring and my position will be eliminated, you know, due to X, Y, Z. And so getting that story ready, but again, not necessarily feeling like you have to go into that much detail or highlight too much about it unless they bring it up as a concern. So for you on your resume right now, you won't add that career break section or anything like that. You will just highlight really why you're excited about applying to that specific job at that specific company. If you aren't getting a position before you end up getting your position terminated, and then you do end up having a little bit of a gap, that's where you'll then go ahead and add those pieces in. But for now, you can just treat it as you're doing a normal job search and um, only kind of answering those questions if it does come up. And maybe if you are switching into another industry or another type of career that you haven't done before, going back to some of those things I mentioned earlier, where you've, you've taken some time to really reevaluate what your career goals and values and priorities are. And that's what's led you to shift in trying this new type of role or leading towards this organization. Ultimately, everything should really be framed around why you're excited about that specific position at that specific organization and really highlighting more of those pieces as opposed to why you're leaving your current situation. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to take a couple more questions here, and then I'm going to share some resources um, that pertain to some of the other questions in the chat about resumes and job searching. Um, but Sydney, this one's for you. You talked about some um, recent data about addressing the career gap. Were there different effects depending on the time of the gap, you know, one month versus a year? Oh, that is a great question. I am not 100% sure off the top of my head. I'll have to go back and look at that study. I think we actually have a link to that study. So I'll see if I can get that added into the resources as well. But think about other reasons why people might have gaps, right? We have so many clients who have been stay-at-home parents for many years, or maybe they were on a sabbatical, or um, there's just a number of reasons. There's moving, like you saw all those career breaks that we mentioned earlier. There's moving, there's caregiving, there's dealing with an illness. And so I have clients who've had gaps for, you know, 10 years or longer. And so that's where you want to just sell yourself in the best light on your resume and focus on what you've been doing during that time. So maybe in your 10 years of a gap that you've had, you've been actively volunteering. You've been a part of other organizations where you've been volunteering on, on the side or something to that regard. It's okay to list those volunteer experiences in your professional experience section instead of just having a 10 year gap. For example, I had a client recently who has been retired for the last several years, but in the last several years, she's been a treasurer for the Cub Scouts. Um, she's a part of another organization where she sits on their board and she's responsible for a lot of professional type things of doing reports or doing budget management or things like that. And so even thinking about your volunteer experiences or other things that you've been doing during this time that are still related to something you might do in a professional position can definitely be listed as a professional experience experience on your resume. So it really does not matter how long the gap has been. If you can talk about what you've been doing during that time and also how you're excited about moving forward, like I said, to that specific position and company, if you've been doing courses or anything like that. So focusing less on what feels like the negative aspects, I've been unemployed for a long time or things to that regard and focusing more on the positive of but here's what I've been doing and here's how I'm still marketable. Here's what I can bring to your organization and here's the value that I have as a candidate. Great, thank you. Okay, last question and then it's a big one, but see what you can do in a couple of minutes. Um, motherhood, returning to the workforce. How do you address this in a positive way in the application process? Um, this is actually quite common and um, something that we deal with regularly with a lot of our clients. Um, and we actually have a um, return to work guide that is specifically addressed to motherhood. 
um, and those that are returning to work. So what you're going to want to do is go back and think about those transferable skills that you developed while you were a working mother, um, because you're working in the house, just as if you were working outside of the house. And you're going to want to focus on those skills that you um, enjoyed. And if at the same time, you did any sort of volunteering, as Sydney mentioned, throughout your time as a mother, you can incorporate that in. So maybe that was um, some PTA work that you did at the school, um, or you were, as uh, Sydney mentioned earlier with her previous client, you did Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts or Brownies or anything like that. You can incorporate that in as well. Um, so you've got to go back to thinking about the skills that you developed and the ones that you enjoyed, and then think about how you're going to um, approach that and bring that into your job search. And when you job search, you know, and you go to those advanced search sites, you don't have to put in job titles. In fact, searching by job titles is going to limit you because the um, website's going to look exactly for those words. So go more on your job functions. What's that work about? And so then that brings you back to what motivates you to want to work. Um, that's going to make you want to make a contribution, that's going to make you want to earn a paycheck. And so if you go more off of your job skills, your job functions, your job values, then you have a better opportunity of seeing where you fit in. Um, and return to work motherhood is very similar to what we talked about earlier in this um, part of the webinar, where you got to go back to yourself and see how you fit in. So you've got to start with what are your career values, what are your interests, and what are your skills. And when you get some time and you focus on that and you get some tangible answers, you can apply that um, to see where you fit into different types of work. And then from there, you move forward into developing your resumes and your cover letters and you're making connections. And don't disconnect, disconnect or, or I'm sorry, don't discount the networks that you make. Um, a lot of your friends may know of opportunities that are out there that you could volunteer at to get some experience or that may even have a paid opportunity for you. So um, get your family and your friends involved and let them know that you're starting your search to return to work. Um, because, you know, returning to work is a job in and of itself. And so you want to give yourself the time to, to um, research that, figure out what you want to do, and then apply it to um, your resume so that you can find those opportunities. But yeah, returning to mother or returning to work as a mother is very common um, client for us that we work with. Did you have anything you wanted to add on that, Sydney? Yeah, no, I think you answered it perfectly. And the ultimate thing is just not discounting volunteer experience because you sometimes do a lot of professional level work in volunteer organizations and um, freelance contract, temporary, all great places to start. If you're you know, wanting to just get a little bit more experience, you're wanting to get your foot in the door somewhere, that is a great way to kind of segue in before maybe diving into that full-time role if you're wanting to just learn and get the rope somewhere. So don't discount those volunteers volunteer, freelance, and contract opportunities just to get started. And the more that you can proactively, I'm going to say this a million times probably, but proactively and independently take time to do learning. The internet is an amazing place and I don't know how we lived before it because everything is on the internet. And so really just taking the time to get tech savvy, learning new tools and software systems and seeing what's out there that's marketable. Um, one thing I don't think we put into the chat and Tracy, if you can, LinkedIn actually has 10 um, different career paths that they've identified as the most the most jobs in the last four years with this most steady growth um, and for free until December of December 31st um, you can actually take these LinkedIn learning courses for free and there's whole learning paths for each of these job categories. So things like customer service, sales, project management, I think there's IT support. Um, there's a couple on there, there's 10 total. But if you're interested in learning any of those areas that you don't have much experience in or you wanna get familiar with um, from the very beginning foundations to more advanced things, it's a really great free resource to take advantage of in what they've identified as some of the top um, career fields right now that need a lot of people. So um, Definitely just doing that quick and independent learning and upskilling and taking advantage of all that the internet has to offer. <laughs> Great, thanks you too. Okay, just a few notes on some other resources before we go to breakout rooms. Um, we have the Career Advice Network at UC Santa Cruz and this is free mentorship from other alumni. We have over 1600 alumni in there. 
Um, you can have career conversations, mock interviews, lots of ways to engage and get support from your network there. Next slide, please. We also have services available to you as alumni through the Career Center. All of their online resources available to you. And we now use Handshake. So you can look for entry level jobs on Handshake to find them available. And they also just opened up one on one career coaching conversations if you are a graduate of 2018, 19, or 20. And I'll talk a little bit about. Um, our career coaches too. We have a career coach directory on the alumni website. So two of our coaches are our breakout room hosts today and you get to meet them as we move on to that. But they offer services to alumni as well. Next slide, please. Lastly, we have a career design fellowship that we've been doing um, every six months. The next one is in May. So if you wanna go deeper, you're really thinking about mapping out a plan or making a big career change, we'll be uh, posting the registration for that in March and you'll learn more about it in our next career newsletter. Um, all right, and so <clears throat> with that, I think we can go to our last slide as we get ready to transition. These are, are gonna be our coaches and our volunteers today, sorry, our volunteers for our breakout room. So this slide will be available when you hop over. We're gonna chat out the link to the Zoom meeting room, but um, there'll be five rooms here, Mike, is our former alumni president. If you're interested in tech in Silicon Valley, that'd be a great room to join. Marcia Wall is a career counselor, former English professor, um, recruiter, if you're interested in those spaces. Um, Armando works in biotech and is also a very avid career volunteer for the campus. Eric is also a career uh, coach. And if you are interested in learning about, he's made many career shifts. So if you're interested in that type of conversation, hop over there for Eric. Um, but Come on over and join us um, and we will see you there.